While many in our nation and around the world are struggling with this pandemic, we believe we serve a mighty, powerful God who is not limited by what seems to be impossible. Although this may not be the format for how we typically worship, it is a gift to have technology that allows us to worship together even if we're not physically in the same place. Because God says that where two or three are gathered, He is in the midst of them. So even during a pandemic, we are going to continue to gather together and worship Him, sing together and pray together. We are so glad you have chosen to join us for worship today. Church, welcome to the new season of Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry online service. We are so happy to have you join with us today. In this new season, let us continue to observe the following. Be punctual and gather your family members and friends together. Share and start a watch party prior to the planned time of the streaming of online service. Online service should be attended with the same attitude with the physical service. Avoid disruptive activities such as house chores and internet activities. Remember, worship time is a time dedicated to God. Be accountable for each other in the church community by checking up and supporting each other. Feel free to drop a comment, greeting, or prayer request in our comment section box. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Let us always remember that Jesus is the reason for all seasons. He is the reason we exist as a community and why we have a mission to serve the world, pandemic or not. God bless us all.
opening prayer church um, let's, let's, let's be in the mood of prayers uh, lift up your, your heart lift up your spirit as we are going to call on the presence of God in this sermon uh, Father we thank you Father we will worship your name for you are the awesome the awesome God Jehovah, we thank you Lord for uh, the blessings of the week. We thank you Lord for uh, giving us a successful week. Father, we thank you Lord for um, the testimonies, your blessings, your 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 your, your, your finite mercies, Lord, throughout this week. Father, we worship your name for uh, making it possible that we are in your presence, you know, uh, on this. Uh, this, this day of worship, Father, can we come to the sermon uh, that will be shared unto us, Father, into your hands, O oh Lord, King of God, uh, we present our, our elder, Elder Dorati, uh, into your hands, O oh Lord, King of God, Father, you've been using her, O oh Lord, in many ways in this um, heavenly race. King of Holy, we pray, O oh Lord, that you are going to use her again, O uh, oh Lord, this afternoon as um, a vessel unto honor. King of Holy, we pray, O oh Lord, that you shall speak forth your word through her, O oh Lord. King of Holy, you shall fool her. You shall, you shall be, uh, you, you sh uh, he sh she shall be full. Uh, of your word that that she's gonna speak forth, O oh Lord, this word, O oh Lord, into our, our into our spirit, O oh Lord, King of Glory. This afternoon, Lord, we pray, O oh Lord, that the, your word shall go forth as um, as as uh, as a seed that uh, goes forth on the fertile land, King of Glory. Your word shall you know, grow forth in our life. We shall grow forth in our spirit. We shall grow forth in our soul, Lord, King of Glory. Father, King of Glory, we pray that it, your, your word shall be, O oh Lord, a light to our path, and, and uh, it's going to be a watchword, O oh Lord, in, in everything we do, Father, King of Glory. We commit these words into your hands, Father, King of Glory. Make us, O oh Lord, the doers of your word. Make us, O oh Lord, not only the hearers of your word, but also the doers of your word, King of Glory. Father, King of Glory, we pray, O oh Lord, that this word, O oh Lord, shall fall into our life, O oh Lord, and it shall remain. Father, King of Glory, we shall we shall we shall live in this world O oh lord king of glory we shall live according to your word as if even as we wait unto you on the last day king of glory we present O oh lord uh, uh, your, this uh, this particular sermon this particular word that will be shared into your into our spirit this afternoon we pray O oh lord that anything that the enemy have prepared any plans of the enemy to take this word away from us is it issues of life is it problems is it challenges is it uh, is it is it um, uh, 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 health conditions anything that is that 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 will, that will be in the in the way from from making this word not to not to be filtered in our spirit oh lord king of glory uh, king of glory we pray lord that that shall be we, we pray, O oh Lord, that by the name of Jesus, it shall be destroyed in the name of Jesus. If it's, if it's, if it's um, uh, sickness, your body is healed in the name of Jesus. King of Glory, we pray, O oh Lord, that anything that will be a distraction, Father, King of Glory, to, 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 uh, that, will be, that will hinder this word to, to, to come into our spirit, to come into our life and remain. King of Glory, we pray that that will be removed in the name of Jesus. Father, King of Glory, uh, we commit, O oh Lord, uh, we commit, O oh Lord, the service into your hands, O oh Lord. King of Glory, we pray, O oh Lord, that uh, 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 this service, O oh Lord, shall be uh, uh, shall be done according to your 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 plan, O oh Lord, King of Glory. This word, O oh Lord, shall be shared according to your uh, according to your your. Your, your your plan for us, O oh Lord, King of Glory, and everything that you've you've planned, O oh Lord, that that everything that you plan in our life, O oh Lord, that we go forth through the hearing of this word, King of Glory, we pray that that shall be accomplished 
in the name of Jesus. Father, you said uh, you speak forth your word and it, it healed us. Father, King of Holy, this word you are going to speak forth shall be shall come, Lord, Lord, as a healing. It shall is going to come, O Lord, as as uh, as uh, as your voice is going to come, O Lord, as as that which you, which we which we hunger for, Lord. In our days, King of Holy, we pray, O Lord, that that your word, O Lord, shall 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 shall, shall pierce forth our heart like four-edged sword in the name of Jesus and, and, and break and break anything, any yoke that is not of you in our life and it shall, it shall remain, O Lord, and, and it shall bear forth fruits in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, King of glory. Thank you for giving us, O Lord, your presence. Thank you for coming and joining us, O Lord, in this, in this uh, service as we share your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, for for making it possible that that we are, we we are sharing this word today. In Jesus' most wonderful name, we pray. Be thou exalted, Lord. Thank you, Father, for prayer answers. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' most gracious name, we pray. Amen.
are good and your mercy to us forever, oh God. You are our Savior, you are faithful, God, and you are for your own purposes. And so, Lord God, today we want to worship you, Lord God. Glorify your name.
thank you. We want to follow you, Lord God. And we want to be with you, Lord God. Praise to you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Shabbat Shalom everyone. Thank you for watching Lorian Online Fellowship, your church online. This is the Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry Church, a Bible-based church, and we are lifting up the name of the Lord Jesus Christ alone. Lorian is not just a church, but a family and a home that helps deepen your relationship with our Lord Jesus Christ. I would like to acknowledge the presence of everyone who is joining us right now from the comfort of your home or wherever you are watching us from. Praise God for your lives. We are so blessed and excited to be worshiping with you all today. And for those who are here for the first time, we are so glad to welcome you all to the Lorian family. We would like you to know that on December 24th, our online service will start at 10 a.m. instead of 12 noon and it will be resumed again to its usual timings on December 31st. Prepare our hearts in seeking the Lord with intimacy. Join our three nights of fire to fast and pray for the year end on December 20th to December 30th. We are told that the prayer of a righteous is powerful and effective. As we pray, we stand watch over our families, over our cities, and our nations. Just as men stood on city walls to watch for approaching danger, God calls us to be a modern-day watchman and warn those who are in danger. Join our 24 hours prayer watch from December 31st to January 1st, 2022. And we have a series of services every week that will be flashed on your screen for more details. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and click the notification bell to your YouTube channel and Facebook page so you won't miss the updates and upcoming online services. So what are you waiting for? Share our online service now on your social media platform to your family and friends. Grab this opportunity to share the word of God to many. This is the right time for you to spread the good news to all nations be God's ambassador let us all prepare our hearts and minds as we all watch listen and receive the word of God we are looking forward to be seeing you again next time be safe and be blessed now as we will go to our next form of worship let's tithe and offering Christ is, it is a best principle of God is that we ought to follow. Let's go to the Bible in Mark 3, verse 10 to 11. It says, Bring all your tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and prove Prove me now by it, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and, and I will pour the windows of heaven for you and pour, pour you out a blessing that there shall not be enough, enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer you for your sake. He, sh he shall not destroy the fruits of it shall not destroy the fruits of our ground. Neither shall it shall eat your vine drops its fruits before the time in the in the field says the Lord of hosts so this is the word of God now the best reason why we tithe how do we tithe we tithe on every blessing that comes our way um, 
Sometimes there is this fellowship where I, I fellowship from my country. Uh, they taught us uh, some of the ways in which we can type. And they said this one uh, related it with an example of an overkedo style. When you look at the overkedo, there is this outer coat which you peel off and throw. That means the, this outer coat is the tithe, that you cannot eat the tithe. You have to pay it and after finishing that outer coat, you throw it, it goes to the garden and it makes fertilization. And that is the offering that you can give to, to the Lord. And then there is the seed. The seed is is some other parts of offering. Um, with offering, there is it's a broad way, but one of the offering that I can also elaborate more of is the first fruit. Um, most times we forget the first fruit. The first fruit is that blessing that that. Uh, that you get and without lip, you pay once in a year. Say like you've got your salary, you pay all that amount for the whole uh, in a yearly, once, once in a of that particular of that particular item you are paying for. And for this first fruit, you 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 can redeem it if it's blemished uh, with something better for the Lord. However, but we cannot redeem the first bonds. As long as the first bond, even though, however, the first bond is, just uh, the first bonds are not redeemed. For them, they are, give, they are given for the Lord. Uh, when you read Proverbs 3, Verse 9, it says, Honor the Lord with all, with your capital and sufficiency. That is from righteousness and uh, a what? A business. And with the fruits, with the first fruits of all your income, so shall your storage be overflowing and, na and with new wine. Uh,
let's pray for our tithes and offering lord jesus christ we thank you we glorify your holy name father we place into your hands into your hands our tithes and offering may you sanctify them may you bless them may you cleanse them may you purify them so they can become a worthy, a worthy sacrifice uh, before you just as you said in your word that they when we bring them to you lord jesus christ that your house shall be filled and once your house shall not once your house does not lack father you 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 told us to test you and here we are we test you lord we test you by your word we test you on our tithe we have given out of the uh, we have given out of what you have given unto us father we bring it to you and may your name be glorified father we pray for whoever has given that their hands shall not that you shall bless their hands and where they have removed what they have given to you because out of what you have given to them they have returned to you father you are the lord of the hearts may you for whatever their hearts desires and for whichever some they have offered offered some they have offered because they have him they need healing Father, may you grant them their healing. Some they have offered because they lack fin fin finances. May you may you bless their finances, because you said you have you eat the devourer, eat that devourer. Some they have given for a lot of various reasons, but whatever that is hindering their finances may it be broken i rebuke it in the name of jesus christ and father i pray for those finance ministry so you can give them the you can give them the knowledge and wisdom father in which to carry out the finances and you lead them as your will as your will does you with this we pray with thanksgiving in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed afternoon, morning, or evening, church, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry, your church online. We are gathered here once again for our Friday service, and I'm ex so excited to share what the Lord has prepared for each one of us. I'm Sister Dorothy Tolentino, and I'm blessed to be given the opportunity to share His Word for each one of you at this time. Amen seen John Lloyd and Bea Alonso's Jollibee short movie commercial. For my non-Filipino friends, John Lloyd Cruz and Bea Alonso are the Philippines' best loved teams. And for sure, many of us got kilig again for their comeback tandem, even if it was just a commercial for spaghetti and fried chicken. But Today, I wanted to share that message, not to make us kilig, but to appreciate deep relationships that goes beyond familial kind of love. You know, the love for, for families, for friends, that, that kind of love. And so, I'm talking about the covenant relationship that of David and Jonathan in the Old Testament that how this relationship has transcended even into the next generation into Jonathan's son Mephibosheth. Amen? And how 
this message or this relationship or this covenant is even related to Christmas itself. Amen? So before we proceed, let's all bow down our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we glorify you. We magnify you, O oh God. We praise and thank you, Lord God, for gathering all of us together in our Friday worship service. Lord, indeed, today is a day of celebration. Today is a day of worship. Today is a day, Lord God, to magnify and glorify you, O oh God. And so today, Lord God, we are excited to hear more from you, O oh God. Lord, as I'll be speaking, O oh God, let your words, be, Lord God, be the one to really penetrate into each one of our hearts into each one of our minds into each one of our souls Lord God and bring about changes Lord God in our lives Lord we commit to you each and every one Lord God to those who are listening here in the church in the pastoral house and to those who are listening at the comforts of their home or wherever they may be they may be at their job sites oh God Lord let it be that this time Lord God that as we hear your word Lord God let it be oh God that your presence will your presence will just embrace us oh God your presence will just fill us oh God with excitement Lord God Lord we glorify you we magnify you oh God and we declare Lord God that your warring angels the God the angels Lord God are already protecting us oh God in the name of Jesus we thank you Lord God we glorify you in Jesus name amen and amen so for this afternoon our scripture is taken from the book of first samuel chapter 18 verses 1 to 3 so let's all read this together after david had finished talking with saul jonathan became one in spirit with david and he loved him as himself from that day saul kept david and did not let him return home to his family and Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself amen and so for this afternoon our title for our message is the one true pair the power of blood covenant amen in here we see that when David was David is already known as Israel's greatest king when he was yet very young something happened to him that's both a beautiful picture of christmas and a portrayal of god's blood covenant with you amen and so if you are saved i want you all to understand that god gave you and me or us a blood covenant together amen so in here we saw that in the book of Samuel, we saw that after young David, when he was still a boy, like maybe in, a, in his teenage years, after he killed Goliath, he didn't go seeking for fame. He was humble, introducing himself to King Saul as the son, as only the, as the son of Jesse. On the other hand, Jonathan, the king's son or Saul's son, he formed an unbreakable bond with David at that time, a blood covenant. The Bible says that Jonathan's soul was knit, amen, amen, knit to the soul of David. You can read that one in first in First Samuel 18, chapter 1. It says there, after David had finished talking with Saul, Jonathan became one in spirit with David, and he loved him as himself. Amen. So in here we read about the blood covenant. So, what is a blood covenant? the old testament phrase literally means to cut a covenant so in old western movies we've seen two people making a blood co covenant by cutting an incision on the wrist then joining their hands and lifting them into heaven to make a promise and then so that that is a symbolism of covenant it is a co-mingling of lives amen and the scar the scar that remains after they had that incision that is now what you call as the mark of the covenant so if you don't realize the almighty god in a, is in a covenant with you you will never live in victory let me say that again if you don't realize or if you don't if you haven't even realized that in your life that our heavenly father through his son Jesus Christ made a blood covenant with you then we could never live in victory amen so 
Just as we are sometimes closer to our brothers and sisters in Christ than to members of our natural families, Jonathan became closer to David than to his own father. In their blood covenant, Jonathan and David vowed to be forever loyal to each other and their children. Just as what we have read in the scripture in 1 Samuel 18, 1, 2, 3. So, how does a blood covenant impact your life today? Amen? Christians boast of victory, yet we don't sometimes live in it. We just live it. We are victorious. We say that we are victorious. We say that we have Christ's victory in us. But then sometimes we don't actually manifest that in our day-to-day -day lives. To live victoriously, we need to understand that God made a covenant with us the moment that we got saved. Amen? The whole Bible is about blood covenant. All Bible promises are covenant promises. Blood covenants go all the way back to the book of Genesis and God's blood covenant with Abraham. When Jesus held the last the last supper with his disciples he said in Luke chapter 22 verse 20 this cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you so each time we come to the Lord's table we celebrate the blood covenant last week we just had our Lord's table and so this gives us a new perspective on how we treat the Lord's supper that's why we should not take it lightly we should not take it like it's just an ordinary, we'll just eat the bread and the juice and drink of it like that. No, we should honor it because every time we drink of the cup, we are saying and we are declaring that indeed we have that blood covenant with our Lord Jesus. Amen. And even Christmas and God's blood covenant with you are locked together. The Lord Jesus was sent to fulfill God's promise of a Savior. And through His blood, each one of us can be forgiven, redeemed, and accepted by the Father. Amen. And so, tonight or this afternoon, it would be it would be also a wonderful uh, message that next week we are going to be celebrating Christmas. And so, this message will also be a preparatory for Christmas. Amen. Because. Aside from knowing the blood covenant, aside from knowing that indeed God is our true pair, we can also ex we can also say that today we are already we, we we will study about the story of of King David to Jonathan to his son and how it relates to Christmas. Amen. And so, in our first point, we can really say that Christmas has already been celebrated in First and Second Samuel. Amen. When young David began receiving praise from the Israelites, King Saul, who was insane with jealousy, who was really, really jealous of, of David, he sent out a royal edict that David must be killed. Like, could you imagine that kind of jealousy that you live the remaining days of your life in that envy, in that anger, in that resentment, and to just have that one goal to kill David and even if David was the one who even saved Israel back then yet he allowed King Saul allowed himself to really be consumed with jealousy so brethren I want us all to understand that we need to deal we really have to deal with jealousy we really have to deal with pride we really have to deal with anger and do not allow it to flourish because it will come to a point in your life that you will not have any other goal but to really cause harm to other people. Just like what happened to King Saul, whose, whose whole life he has dedicated to just killing David. Amen? He began hunting David like a wild partridge on the hills of Judea. And so for years, all he was focused on was killing David, even his forces. So it's not only you who gets affected by the anger, the resentment, the pride, all of those. It's also the people surrounding you will be affected. They too can experience, they too will also 
absorb the anger they too will also absorb the pride the, the resentment and so even if they don't really know why you hate other people but because you hate them other people will begin to hate hate the one you hate also and so that's not good because instead of spreading negativity this christmas we need to spread positivity amen so let's go back then one day so for the years of trying to get david killed one day saul sad to say saul king saul and his son jonathan got slain they were they were both slain during a battle against one of israel's enemies now david whom god had anointed even before his fight with goliath he became now the the king but in saul and jonathan's family there was a blind panic of course when you know that the the current king at that time king saul had been slain and also his son had been slain of course they were really panicking because people were already affected by the negativity of king saul whose main goal was just to kill david and so at that time those surrounding the families the families of king saul they already had it in their mind that david is also after them why is king saul very why is king saul very sold out to really kill david because he saw david as his competition he saw david as a threat and so that was also inculcated in the minds of the families of david that david will be david now that their king has been killed david will be after them david will now kill them so all of them they were wondering when will the retaliation begin the family of king saul were like having that sense of paranoia in them that oh no king david is now the king for sure he will retaliate when will david take vengeance on his enemies and so in the family of king saul especially on his son jonathan he had a little son named mephibosheth he was still a very small boy when his father was killed during that um encounter with the Israel's enemies when jo uh, when Mephibosheth's um, nurse heard of Jonathan's death he grabbed the little boy and tried to take him into a safe place into a desert called Lodibar I know this sounds familiar because Pastor John has already shared this um, few months ago about the about the story of Mephibosheth and and Lodibar but this afternoon let us just be reminded of because this is the result of the blood covenant. This is the result of the blood covenant between David and Jonathan. And now it has already transcended into the life of Mephibosheth. Amen. So going back to that nurse. She didn't know for sure. She didn't know because she was taking care of Mephibosheth. Of course, how, why would she be bothering about the blood covenant of, of Jonathan and David, right? She didn't know about the blood covenant of David and Jonathan. And so in that moment that while they were rushing to get away from the presence of David just to go to that desert place in Lodibar the nurse dropped the poor little boy Mephibosheth and she and the poor boy fell and so he was crippled for his life how many times must Mephibosheth have asked her nurse, his nurse why am I here the nurse could have replied because someone's trying to kill you why am i crippled because we were running away from him from david what's going to happen you better hope he never finds you so imagine all of your all of the years that you were growing up you're trying to find an answer why did you run away and the same answer you've been hearing because someone is trying to kill you why was i crippled because you were trying to run away from that person it's a good thing that you were crippled not it's a good thing that you only got crippled not dead because he if ever he finds you out he might have killed you there right then and there so imagine what kind of negative mindset that these people has inculcated in the mind of this poor boy Mephibosheth Mephibosheth grew up with this lesson ingrained in his mind fear David hate David there he was dragging in his crippled limbs eating dust breathing dust 
drinking from a tin cup, a prince in exile. So, friends, centuries before the manger in Bethlehem cradled a king. You and I were just the same as Nepivoset. We were crippled, we were exiled from our king, and we were even drinking from our tin cups. We thought we were satisfied with our tin cups. Yet in the garden, before the fall, we were destined to inherit the earth, to rule and reign. Yet we lost that inheritance. But that wasn't the end of the story, either for Mephibosheth, neither for us. Because Mephibosheth is a picture of a desperate condition. Before we received God's forgiveness, before we received God's kindness, before we received His agape love. And so, the blood covenant, here comes the blood covenant right now. The blood covenant transformed Mephibosheth's story. And also, that same blood covenant transforms our story. Amen? So, Christmas is indeed for the lost. It came for the lost. It came to the life of Mephibosheth. So one day, King David was thinking about his covenant with Jonathan. Here's a good thing about David. He never forgets his covenant. He never forgets his promises. Even it was years back, yet he knows in his heart that he has this covenant. And so he has, he has to fulfill that covenant. Amen? So David was wondering if there was still a member of Jonathan's family, he could possi possibly still be alive. So some people in the court were probably thinking, here comes, this is it, this, the time has really come that King David will really be putting on his vengeance. He'll really be applying his vengeance to the, to the family of King Saul. But David, in his mind, is not after vengeance. Why would he? He only wanted to fulfill his covenant with Jonathan. And so, learning about Mephibosheth, he wanted to bless and show kindness to him. That's what he said in 2 Samuel verse nine, uh, chapter 9, verse 1. And so David said, go fetch him, bring him to me. Amen? So out from the place thundered the royal troops. Out they went to Lodibar. Imagine, Mephibosheth, was, Mephibosheth saw the troops coming from afar and then they just stopped, stopped at his door. Oh no, he might be thinking in himself, oh no, the time has come. David has found me. They pushed the door open and asked the, the, the boy or asked the man because he's already a man now. Are you Mephibosheth? Yes, come with us. And so... He, he went with them. He asked them, why? Because the king wants you. At this moment, I could just imagine that that time, that day that you've been dreading about all your life has finally come. How would you react? For sure, at that time, Mephibosheth was, could not do anything. He was already surrounded by the king's troops. If he ran away, he could not do that. He's crippled. So he could not do anything. He just lowered his eyes, looked to the ground, look at the door, look at his crippled feet, look at the dirt on the floor. As the horses, and then the horses, the troops, sent him, sent him away back to the home of King David. So he thought that, he, as he looked back, he thought that that deserted place of Lodibar was his home, was his safety. He thought that that place was the place where he could just be safe. Yet, he did not know in his mind that there was a wonderful place waiting for him. Amen? So as they brought him before King David, we might wonder if he had any memory of the palace. Because for how many years he'd been exiled in, the, in that place, in Lodibar, in that desert? For sure, you've been thinking, how would the palace look like now? How would it feel to step on solid ground, not on dust, not on dirt. How would it feel to to really be to really be clothed with royal garments? So he was thinking, what if he was not lost? What if he did not go out of the kingdom? So casting his crutches aside, as he was already there in the kingdom, he fell on his face, he trembled like a bird, 
Yet David immediately said in 2 Samuel 9, 7, it says here, Do not fear, for I will sure, show, surely show you kindness for Jonathan's father's sake and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat at my bread continually. Wow. To a person, for me, people said, who was expecting death, David said, I'm restoring your inheritance. Dine at my table and be like my son. Mephibosheth could hardly take it. Like, why would you return my inheritance? Like, have me eat? at your table be as your son but here comes david explaining to him it's not because of anything on your part it's because it's my love for jonathan for his sake i'm keeping our blood covenant so you can see here blood covenant transcends to the next generation it does not only affect the one to whom you have a covenant to, but it will also manifest in the generations that is to come. Amen? So, Mephibosheth is exactly where as we once were, before Christ and before the cross. Before Jesus, no one dared to address God as Father, because that is an abomination. Yet, when Jesus came, He taught us how to pray, and He started with our father amen so now as we are beloved as we are called into his into his family we have now the access to call our heavenly father as father as papa as dad because we now have that kind of relationship with him we are inheriting what we don't deserve through the blood covenant amen so until now, Mephibosheth saw David as an enemy, but he is no longer out of fellowship with the king. He is in fellowship with the king. He is no longer running away from David because he is running to David. He has a decision to make. First, he must ratify the covenant, change his mind about David or repent, and accept the covenant by faith. Now, those sound familiar because those are also the terms that we use in the New Testament in how to have that relationship with the Lord. Come into repentance and believe in faith. Amen? So, Mephibosheth ratified the covenant and immediately, Christmas came to the lowly former resident of Lodibar as he, transferred, as he was transferred to the palace of the king. Amen? So, Christmas restores the promised inheritance. Yesterday, Mephibosheth lived on the backside of nowhere in the desert place of Lodibar, eating and breathing dust. Today, he was awakened on silken sheets of the palace. There were servants who would be there to meet his needs, saying, the king and his sons are waiting for you. You're coming to breakfast at his table. So imagine that kind of that kind of privilege to just be in the king's palace. He came down to the table groaning with food. There's a white linen cloth, there's a tablecloth. Who would have thought that after long years of him being crippled, he would experience this kind of wonderful privilege to dine with the king. His misshapen limbs are hidden beneath it. So this is a picture of what Jesus has done for us. He covered us with righteousness and clothed us with pure white linen. Mephibosheth must have been thinking, I really can't understand this. I don't understand it, but I can't deny this. I'm already, yesterday I was just in the desert, but now I'm already here at the palace. It's because of a blood covenant with my father. So here I am. And so as David passes maybe one one day when they were eating and he was asking about this why why he is there why he is so privileged already he saw that scar in david's hand and yes that's already it david had a scar on his wrist which marks the covenant that he once made with his father and so it dawns into mephibosheth indeed there is power in the blood covenant amen 
So each time that we come to the Lord's Supper, each time that we partake of the bread, let it also be a reminder to us. Let it always sink in into our hearts, into our minds, and imagine that scene wherein Jesus was passing that bread. And one day, when we will go into the marriage supper of the Lamb, when we are connected, we are united with Him, in the, in, after that we will be um, going back into His presence, Jesus will pass on the bread to us and we will see His scars. We will see the scars of those nails, of what He did for us, of the blood covenant that He has done for us. Amen? So, let us always remember that Christmas transforms us. Though Adam lost our inheritance, God foretold a Redeemer. Later, He made a covenant. Jesus restored that inheritance, that lost inheritance for us. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. For Christ's sake, God forgives and redeems. So here's a wonderful thing. Mephibosheth was crippled by a fall. We were crippled because of Adam's fall. Mephibosheth was heir to a kingdom but lost his inheritance. God created man to reign upon the earth, yet we lost that inheritance. He couldn't come to David, yet David was the one who found him. David was the one who sought him. And so, just, as, like, just like with us, we had to be found. God found us. Before David rescued him, he was good as dead. Before Jesus, we were under the sentence of death. Just like what Romans 6.23 says, that the wages of sin is death. The soul, the, the soul who sins shall die. We are all sinners. We are meant to die. Mephibosheth hated and feared David. The lost mankind hated and feared God. Mephibosheth was deceived, thinking that David was the enemy. Yet, David was indeed his friend. Before he was saved, before we were saved, we also thought that God is only there to punish us. God is only after of our mistakes. Yet, now that we are saved, we come to realize that God is indeed our friend. Amen? Mephibosheth was in bondage because he did not know the blood covenant was waiting his acceptance. Today, people run from God because they don't know that He is love and that He has made a blood covenant on our behalf. Amen? So, what are the results of this blood covenant? Centuries before Bethlehem, Christmas came to Lodibar. The small, crippled Mephibosheth, he was alone, he was disinherited, he was abandoned, yet he received the benefit of the covenant and was ushered into the king's presence because David was a faithful covenant keeper. So our God is also a faithful covenant keeper. In Jesus, we are moved from exile into the palace. We have the eternal king's forgiveness, our inheritance is restored, and we fellowship with the king of kings. Amen? So, Mephibosheth is a portrait of what Christmas brings to us. Long ago, our Heavenly Father made a blood covenant with us. The Lord Jesus Christ sealed it with His blood and brought us into a relationship with God, not only now, but for eternity. Amen? So are we all aware of what you have now? We have a Father who is the creator of the universe. Anytime access to the throne of grace, we have the privilege of speaking to Him day and night. And if you ask for it, He will certainly guide us. Amen? Sometimes the devil will whisper in our ears, You are not worthy. You're just like Mephibosheth. You are crippled. You don't need to argue with the devil. We're not worthy. Point him to the blood covenant and let him argue with the Almighty God. Amen? Um, if you have gone to the encounter, remember, ang pako! Amen. When you celebrate Christmas, that would be next week. For the world, they may say that 
it's only 24th, 25th. But for us Christians, we celebrate Christmas all the days of our lives because we already have that blood covenant with the Lord. So as we celebrate Christmas, we see the lights, we see the child in the manger, and hear the carols and laughter and, and merriment. Remember that God, if did, God did not keep His covenant, we would still have been spiritually dead and spiritually eating dust in Lodibar. But 2,000 years ago, God became flesh. This Christmas season, we need to understand that the saving power of the blood of covenant that Jesus made for us and that He is our ultimate one true pair. Amen and Amen. So right now, if you want to experience that relationship and to have that blood covenant with the Lord, I invite you to pray this prayer with me. Amen? Give your heart to Jesus Christ and experience His love, His pure love, and even His blood covenant that will transcend not only to you, but also for the generations that is to come. Amen? Let us pray. Pray this prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Dear God, I admit and I confess that I am a sinner. I humble myself before you and I ask for forgiveness for all of my sins. Even I ask for forgiveness for the sins of my parents and my forefathers. Lord, today I humble myself before you and I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I accept you into my heart and I believe 100% of the blood covenant that you have done for me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, to save me from my sins and to pay the penalty of my sins. And beginning today, I want to live my life for you. I want to live my life knowing you. I want to live my life living in accordance to your word, living in accordance to your will. Thank you, O God, and let the Holy Spirit be my guide, be my be, be the one to correct me and guide me in everything that I do. I commit myself to you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer with me, I want to tell you congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Amen. And so church, before we close, let's all bow down our heads and just lift up this Friday service unto our God. Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this afternoon. Thank you for this time, Lord God, that we have heard of the blood covenant. And thank you, O oh God, for refreshing our minds once again of what you did to Mephibosheth, O oh God, of as a result of the blood covenant between David and Jonathan. Lord, let it be, O oh God, that in our lives, Lord God, we will always remember what you did for us, O oh God, and we will never take that blood covenant lightly in our lives, Lord God. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, because our lives is already sealed and we can fully live in victory, O oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the salvation. We thank you, O oh God, for dying on that cross and you have washed us clean with your blood. Oh God. So today, oh God, may you may you continue, Lord God, to seal that covenant with each one of us, oh God. Be glorified, be magnified, oh God. We lift up to you the remaining parts of the services. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So once again, blessed afternoon. God bless us all. Blessed afternoon, church. I want to praise the Lord for the amazing thing He has done for me. Hallelujah. Uh, recently, I booked my flight to Cameroon. I was uh, going for a short vacation. And the day I went to the Dubai International Airport to check in, when I arrived at the check-in decks, the agent told me that the flight was cancelled, that my flight was cancelled. I'm like, I was surprised, I was shocked. He said, you didn't receive any email? I said, no. And he, I, was I started checking my mobile, like maybe I, I, I didn't like pay attention to the emails that came in, but I couldn't find any deleted or whatsoever, or the spam. 
before that I check but I couldn't find and the, the agent on spot booked for me another ticket but it was a one-way ticket he booked for me on the spot a one-way ticket I am so and in other case they could have sent you back home but he booked for me another ticket and now I, I took the same flight that i was supposed to and but he told me something he said follow up with the airline for your return ticket because i cancelled whatever ticket you had and i made you a new booking so what i was supposed to do actually took a little bit more time it was on the 4th of december that i accomplished the task which i went to follow up back home i just want to give god the glory because the change of flight timing and everything was for my good so i give god the glory that he gave me a new ticket exactly what i needed glory to god amen Church, uh, time for closing prayer. Uh, Father, we thank you, worship your name for uh, making it possible that uh, we are present, O oh Lord, to hear your word. Thank you, Father, for the word you've shared unto our spirit. Thank you, Father, for your body, for uh, the opportunity you've given us in this day to hear your word. Thank you, Lord, for making it possible that, that uh, uh, this word uh, is also shared unto us. We pray, Lord, that this word, Lord, shall be shall be uh, uh, a fertile. Uh, uh, this word shall be like a, a seed in a fertile land unto our hearts, O Lord. We pray, Father, we pray, Lord, that as we are going, O Lord, this word, O Lord, we shall share forth to everyone around us, O Lord. We pray. We pray, Lord, that this word, O Lord, shall remain in us. It shall remain in our spirit, O Lord. Our life shall be, shall, 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 we shall live our life to eliminate, uh, according to this word you've shared unto us today. Come, Lord, we pray, O Lord, that this word, O Lord, shall, shall uh, remove anything that is not of you in our life. O Lord, this word shall give us a whole body. It shall give us uh, 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 healing, it shall, it shall give us, O oh Lord, the prosperity, it shall give us anything we require in life. This word, O oh Lord, Mavuri, shall be, O oh Lord, uh, uh, not just a word, it shall be also a blessing unto us in the name of Jesus, Kimavuri, as we are gonna uh, depart, O oh Lord, Kimavuri, uh, to our respective places, we will return to work, Kimavuri, we pray, O oh Lord, that your word, O oh Lord, shall follow us in everything we do your word o lord shall 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 uh, uh, your word o lord shall be a part of us King of Holy, that people might see us oh lord and they will proclaim that truly we are christians truly we are followers of christ oh lord King of Holy, by the unction of this word King of Holy, we pray lord that your grace shall remain in us in the name of jesus father King of Holy, we thank you lord for for uh, the end of this sermon. Thank you, Lord, for end of the, uh, this, uh, the service today. Father, we pray, we pray, Lord, that throughout this week, we pray, it shall be an amazing week unto us. It shall be a blessed week, O oh Lord. Anything that is not of you in our life, anything that they pray, any any plans of the enemy against our life in this coming week, Father, we pray, by the reason of, of sharing this word, by the reason of sharing your word, by the reason of being present for hearing your word this afternoon, Lord, we pray that that shall not come to pass, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. As we depart, we are not leaving your presence. Guide us and protect us, see us through, O Lord. And the promise of everything, let your name be highly exalted. In Jesus' most wonderful name we pray. Amen. So please raise your hand for the benediction. It says in Revelation 5, 12 to 13, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain for me, in Him, with Him, through Him, to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might 
and honor and glory and blessings. So to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. You may go forth and bring the good news to many and make disciples in all nations. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.